Hey everybody, welcome to the Neville Gossip Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Guy 7571 And with me as always is my good buddy, Anders. Anders, how you doing tonight? I'm good. Hello everybody, I'm excited to be back. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. I've, I, I'm going to warn you guys now, I'm a little excited. I've had a lot of coffee. I already let Anders know I'm in a crazy mood, so this should be a good one. Two uh, wild and crazy start, guys. Yeah, two wild and crazy guys. I love that. Good. But before we start, I just want to take a moment to ask you guys to do me a big favor. So what you guys don't know is we record these podcasts, and a lot of times I take my sweet time, and Anders gets on my ass and gets me on these calls. And then after we record them, he goes and uploads them, and it takes forever, and he edits them, and he makes them all nice. He writes these beautiful descriptions. He leaves you guys links to Bible quotes and everything. Do me a big favor and give him a shout out and say thank you because without Anders, this podcast would not be as good as it is. So I'd also like to say to Anders publicly, thank you. I love you, man. I really appreciate you and all the things you do for everybody. And I'd like you guys to do the same. So please show Anders some love in the comments. And uh, you don't have to leave a like for me, but you can leave a thumbs up next to a go Anders. Okay. <laughs> so please, guys, let him know. So. All right. Well, well, um, thanks, Brian. I I have a lot of fun doing this, and I, I <laughs> actually I, I have seen some appreciative comments, so I'm I'm uh, I've, yeah. I've gotten plenty of love, so I, I appreciate it. But you know, hey, okay, good. There's nothing wrong with more love in this world, so yeah. <laughs> I'll dish I it just out want everybody to know. Yeah, <laughs> I got to give credit where credit is due. So, all right, guys. So tonight we are going to talk about what I had to even be reminded myself. Thank God we had somebody on the sub that was nice enough to post and she put it, you can find it on the subreddit and the title of her post is a lecture of great importance. And even I had kind of forgot about this, but this was a lecture that really made things click for me. And she tells you guys also to read the questions at the end, but a lot of you mm -hmm. guys just went to the questions and didn't quite understand the answers Neville gives because you didn't read the lecture. So I would like to strongly encourage you to read what I think is not only one of Neville's greatest lectures, but the one lecture that he for sure talks about a specific person. You guys drive me crazy. What book is the specific person? So what lecture? Tell me what page we're telling you tonight. Thank you to this wonderful person. I don't know her screen name. I just know her name, but she knows who she is. Thank you for sharing this because you're right. It is a game changer. The lecture is called, and again, the link is in the sub, Imaginations power. Not imagination is power, imagination's power. It's from September 15th, 1969. So let's get into it. The reason I want to talk about this lecture specifically is one very important thing. Neville makes it very clear in this lecture that he understands people have gotten confused because he doesn't think and remind himself every time to get into detail and explain this, but he makes it a point in this lecture to begin the lecture by saying, when I talk about imagination, actually, I'll read what he said. Tonight's subject is imagination's power. I hope you will listen carefully. I hope I will get a nice response that you will agree when I tell you that when I use the word imagination, I mean God. I mean the Lord Jesus. To me, they are interchangeable terms. Well, I can't stop every night to explain this, what this means. I take it for granted that you will know <clears throat> when I use the word imagination, I might just as well use the word Lord, the word God. Now we are told, commit your work to the Lord and it will be established, Proverbs 16, 3. And that anyone who believes what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. No restriction on the power of belief. It doesn't say that if you are good or that if you are evil, this is wide open whether you're kind or unkind. It's a principle. I will share the principle with you and hope you will use it wisely and lovingly. But I cannot deny you the right to simply do it as you want to do it. You may be wicked in the doing, but it's entirely up to you. But this is the principle. The eternal body of man is the imagination and that is God himself. Blake Lacone is the reference he uses there. The eternal body spoken of in scripture is the Lord Jesus. That is the being of whom I speak night after night. Now, I want to get into this. He tells you, Jesus is scripture. Imagination is really his other word for the Lord God. He's saying God and Jesus, real. That's what this whole thing is about, guys. 
A lot of you guys are like, how do I ignore the 3D circumstances? How do I do this? Da, da, da. Is this a bad thing to do? Am I doing something against their will? Blah, blah, blah. He tells you in this lecture, circumstances do not matter. All this other shit you're talking about doesn't matter. If you ask God and you believe that because you asked, it's as good as done, it's as good as done. It doesn't get more simple than this. Right, Anders? Yep. Commit your work to the Lord and it will be established. Proverbs 16.3 is what he quotes right there. Yep. And you have two guys tonight that are telling you, once we committed to the Lord, shit started happening. Right? Anders with you, it Amen. was the job situation. And remember, it went from okay to through the roof. <laughs> through the roof. You were blessed like, I mean, that was a huge blessing. And it just Amen. keeps coming. Yeah, great. Our mm -hmm. lives are completely different now. You know, not even just financially now and always. Because we know and you know what the truth is, guys, I'm very lucky I have Anders and I'll say I think he would say the same thing about me because sometimes we're not going to bullshit you. We forget too. And then when we talk to each other, we're like, hey, man, what are you saying here, buddy? Anders is always reminding me to take my own advice and I'm like saying, hey, man, you give me a good advice too. Why aren't you taking your advice? Exactly. And then we go do it and it works. And guys, the biggest takeaway I got from my time, you know, being friends with Anders, and it's the biggest blessing ever in my life is that Anders has shown me you can talk to God. He literally answers you. Does he come down and be like, hello, John, I'm here to answer your question. No. But you're going to know it's his response. You're going to hear something, see something, read something, and you're going to know that is definitely my answer. Yeah, because you're going to get a loving, you're going to get a loving answer coming back from, oh, from yes. God. It's loving. And it's going to be clear. I remember I got in a cab once and I started talking to the cab driver and sharing things. And for some reason, I shared too much and I told him about the divorce and everything, but it was taking so long. And he goes, my friend, do you know why this is happening, right? And I go, no. And he goes, because you're not getting divorced. It's <laughs> not going to happen. This is God. God is saying to you, no, 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 no. I was like, that is weird. Because I was like, is this thing going to happen? Not going to happen? Uh, what's going to, I was starting to worry about it. And then this cab driver is like, no, 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 my friend. Sorry, bad imitation, but he had a great, <laughs> great voice. And he was very like, you know, animated and was like, no, 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 my friend. This is God showing you it will not happen. It's I not meant that. to be. God is too strong. Forget the courts. God is too strong. That's true. That's what he said. Yeah, and he was right. He was definitely right. You know? We've all, like we talked about in the last lecture, we showed you that clip from, from Bagger Vance, where God is literally tells Bagger or tells, you know, Juna, he's God. And he's like, we all got a cross to bear, not a soul on this planet, but you got to start believing in me. And he tells them, I'm right here with you. I've always been with you and I'm always going to be with you. You guys got to start looking at God as the parent that got it right. My parents did a great job. Anders had very loving parents too. But they're not perfect. They're not God. Yeah. God is the parent that always knows what to say, always knows what to do, and also always just comes in and fix it for you and doesn't worry if he's spoiling you or turning you into an asshole or whatever because he knows who you really are and you're not. The other thing is, the golden rule is really explained in this. Neville is clear. You can hurt other people, but then later, if you read the rest of the lecture, he says, a man might want to harm me. But let that man know that he knows God too. And when the man tries to harm him, he says, I might not even be able to stop you. But what I can do is take it to God and God will make sure that I'm safe. Yeah, I actually wrote so that down him. where Neville yes. says, but I must not forget my principle that in spite of your wickedness, I can turn to the Lord and he will retrieve that which is seemingly which seemingly is lost. And then there's I, I'm pretty sure he has another quote, too, from Paul about how for those who believe God turns all things to good or something to that effect yeah. is in there as well. Yeah. That's definitely in there. Yeah. So this is the golden rule explained to you. OK, if you're going to hurt somebody, you better hope they're not a believer because Neville's telling you. A smart man, a believer knows to turn to God and that he's covered. 
So you're not really going to hurt them, and it's probably going to end up backfiring on you. If they don't, maybe yeah, you can well, get away. Definitely with them. backfire. But I also know that if you're, unless you're a sociopath or a psycho, we might get mad at people for a little while and want to hurt them and say mean things to them. And I definitely did it as a kid, but when you grow up, you realize, one, you don't do that, but two, you're not really mad at them. You're mad at them in that moment. And if you really sat down and thought about it or found out it really happened to them, you'd feel like shit. Even if it's your worst enemy, to know you were responsible. Again, if you're a psychopath, probably not. But I don't think a lot of you guys are psychopaths. So I think, you know, you just got to realize your anger is getting the best of you and not Yeah, off. that's usually what it is. Yeah. And again, I'm speaking to you from experience. The reason I always have Anders on these things is one, because he's brilliant. He gives great advice too, but he also witnessed and helped me get through this stuff. And I sh want to share the conversations we had with you. But Anders will tell you, I was an angry guy. I like you didn't want to listen. You're double minded. No, I'm not. Uh, you're still angry. No, I'm not. God damn it. Well, sounds like you're angry to me. <laughs> yeah, you're angry. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, you're yeah, you're not angry at all. Right. You just screamed at me in the middle of a subway stop. But you're not angry. <laughs> in Times Square, you're screaming and yelling at me. And everybody in Times Square just heard you. But yeah, you're not angry. You're not angry at all, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. Get real. You know. But that's what I love about our friendship. You know. When I was going through my shit, Anders knew I was so full of shit half the time. But he didn't want to embarrass me. But when I finally confessed to him, what did you say? Yeah, I think I said, I mean, you knew all along, you know, yeah. but that's okay. Like, you know, we weren't, you know, we're not upset about it. Yeah. If and, we but were, I'm glad you finally told me to. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and I was like, wow, what a great friend. Yeah. You I know? was happy you admitted it. Yeah. And weren't ashamed to yeah. tell the truth about what you're going through. Yeah, and that's what you guys got to start doing with yourselves. This thing, I feel great. Don't worry, I'm good. You feel great. Your feelings don't have anything to do with it. It's not what you feel. It's what you believe. It's not what you want. It's what you believe. So you might believe that you feel good, but you also might not believe that your person is coming back. You also might not believe the money's going to come in. So feeling great does absolutely nothing for you. This whole beginning of this lecture is telling you, one, imagination, it's God. I don't mean imagination and God is a metaphor for human imagination. I mean, imagination is how you talk to God because that's where all creation comes from. It's God's language. Yeah. It's how you talk to him. Nothing exists without it first being imagined. Not a thing on this planet. Either God imagined it or we imagined it and kept with it until it manifested. From your iPhone to the tree in your living room that God made get planted and sprout and then somebody picked it up and sold it to you. It's pretty fucking amazing what God does on the level that he does it. And you all still doubt that your little teeny tiny problem is insurmountable even to God. Yep. And irony too is I was thinking is a lot of for a lot of times people's problems are if you think about it and maybe this will help you believe it better if you think about it your problem's probably imaginary anyway because you're mm -hmm. thinking about something which hasn't even happened yet <laughs> yeah so that's definitely that's, an imaginary problem that is a great point because I have talked to clients that tell me things I'm like well that actually happened no but I see that's where it's headed well yep. yeah it's definitely going to head that way now that you're <laughs> believing that. But congratulations, you just manifested. You lived in the wish fulfilled, but for the thing that you didn't want. Mm -hmm. You know how to do this. You can do this. You literally just created this third party. You literally just created the breakup, the the blockage on Instagram, which for some reason you guys seem to really care about. I'm blocked on all social media. Guys, there are 50 million ways people can get a hold of you. You can write them a letter. <laughs> yeah, they write you a letter if they have to. They can go to your house. They can email you just because you're blocked on instagram doesn't mean it's the end of the world they could also just unblock you and message you going hey add me back i miss you i love you right 
so much first time that happened. drama and they, they can create a dummy account and uh <laughs> create yeah. a dummy account and message you from that that's See, that, that two seconds he already figured either. out what to do i should, I should <laughs> have told him just figured out, yeah circumvent <laughs> that's the now secret. you're all gonna go create dummy accounts when you get blocked but yeah it's true all he has to do is create a dummy account or just hit re-add whatever it's not that hard he's got your number if he was your boyfriend he probably could get a hold of your parents and be like hey i'm worried about her she won't call me back <laughs> which by the way if you guys ignore them when they first come back giving you breadcrumbs they're gonna say hey i'm getting really worried you didn't respond i'm about to call your mom please just call me back so i know you're okay when really all they want to do is just be like look i love you i want to get back together with you we have a couple clients that are about to write some success stories and they're going to tell you they trusted the no breadcrumb taking thing and they got chased they That's became awesome. the sp yeah but again they were saying i'm not even worried about it man like i just feel so good me and god are so good I'm so happy in my new life. This relationship is more fulfilling than any relationship I've ever had. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm done and I'm good. And wouldn't you know, no sooner do those words leave their mouth than guess who just texted me and asked me to go out with them tonight? Guess who wants to have dinner? Guess who just told me they love me? You know, I've got people that don't respond and one girl recently responded to a guy, let me be more clear in case I wasn't clear about this. I said I wanted to talk to you. It'd be nice to talk to you. What I meant was I definitely want to talk to you. Call <laughs> me. And my man was like, sure. As soon as I'm done with my move, I'll get back to you. Probably like in June. Because <laughs> he feels good and he knows it's done. And he's living his life. I'm so proud of him. So proud of him. I'm proud of a lot of you guys. Some of you don't even coach with me and you're going out and kicking ass on your own. So keep sharing those stories too. We love hearing, Yes. you know, yeah. And again, keep giving my boy Anders some love, you know, he's the reason you guys have all these podcasts. <laughs> so, but, so we're probably not going to get through this whole lecture because it's, it's long and I kind of like to take our time with it. And there's a lot of Bible stuff in here that Anders can expand on as well but so the next thing neville starts to talk about is i believe when he lost his luggage mm -hmm. yeah so he does. talks about yeah mm -hmm. now let me share with you in the beginning before we develop it what i mean by it so you'll be fully aware of it so neville's a little wordy sometimes guys so excuse me if i trip up on my words here when my wife and i returned from san francisco we were there for a few weeks and we checked in two suitcases. When we arrived in LA, one was missing. We asked, what must we do? And they said to go to the loss department and register your complaint. So we did. They said to describe the bag and give us the contents of which I did. Well, I couldn't remember as all my wife packed the bag. Uh, sorry again. And so I told what I thought was there. Then they said to me, when it comes, if it does, we will send it over. Well, it didn't come. Four days. We called several times. They called us several times, and it did not appear. At the end of the fourth day, they said to us that it's lost and to put in a claim, itemize the contents and the value, what it would take to replace the contents of the suitcase. So my wife, having packed it, she did it. Got the entire thing settled to be sent off to headquarters in San Diego. So what he's talking about here is, in the beginning, Neville talks about doing everything you can and going to Caesar first, seeing if you can solve your own problem to gauge like whether or not you even need to kind of get God involved in this stuff. But if you do to really just say, okay, this might seem like a crazy problem, but if I give it to God, it's a simple problem, right? Mm -hmm. Like lost luggage. I mean, come on, there's other things going on. So you might feel silly about it, but Neville's telling you don't. Try to get people to figure it out for you. If they can't, go to God, he'll figure it out for you. And so it's crazy what happens to him. Early on the fifth day, I said, now I've done all that Caesar has asked of me. Render unto, unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. That's what Caesar demands. In my imagination, I saw the bag. Not more clearly than you would see the interior of your living room if you thought about it now. Think of your living room. You don't see it as clearly as you see me or you see your neighbor, but you can see it. You know exactly what it looks like. It was not clearer than that. It was a black and gray bag, a very big bag that my daughter gave me two or three years ago. When you go for a long trip, it's heavily packed. 
and so it was a heavy bag. In my imagination, I lifted the heavy bag and felt the weight of it. Now, what he's saying to you is try to remember everything you can and in your imagination go there because it is going to be fuzzy. You know you're not really in your living room. You know you don't really have the bag. But I bet if you think about it, you can remember a time when you were like, that bag, when fully packed, is heavy. I always have to like throw it over my shoulder and get somebody to help me get it over my shoulder. And then my arms feel like they're going to rip off. I can feel my muscles like literally feeling like they're ripping my biceps. Do that stuff. See it in your head. Feel you holding the bag. It's one great way to visualize, you know? Yeah, but he's really saw... living in the end, you know? He's really like feeling it. He's like, feeling the weight of it. He's imagining the scene. It's almost like <clears throat> rehearsing a scene his imagination before it happens and he's just going through details so there's some people's sense of smell might be important too you know in other times he talks about the words he hears right and so he's really like so it's not just sort of like telling a story or like wouldn't it be nice if i had my bag oh that'd be cool yeah I'd like my bag what he's doing is he's actually living for a moment in his imagination in the reality of having the bag in and, the relief too yeah yeah and that, that's yep and that's the next sentence yep so yeah, yeah when i read the next then sentence. I, and then i held it in my hands until i got the emotion of relief for all the pleasures of the world relief is the most keenly felt it's true and i try to tell you guys when you do your affirmations calm yourself first get your calming statement Whatever it is, God always comes through for me. God never fails me. I always get what I want. This always works. I never, you know, don't, I, whatever I desire, whatever it is, say it not until you're relieved, but until you have belief. Because he says, I felt the relief and that gave me the belief. The relief is a feeling of belief. The full relief means you believe it's done. It's the relaxation, the deep breath you take, the exhale, all that. You got to go. So past instead of. Mm -hmm. You have to go past. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, instead oh. of sitting there. <laughs> Sorry. It's OK. Instead of sitting there and, you know, living in the end of, oh, I don't have my bag. I'm never going to get it. It's lost. It's at the airport. Like, who knows what happened to it? Somebody stole it. Like, yada, yada, yada. Instead of sitting around, you know, living in that end, you know, he sits, he, he sat in the end and, and feeling all those emotions that those bad emotions, those negative emotions, he sat in there until he felt the emotion of relief. <clears throat> so that, that's yep. a contrast, yeah, which I think we can apply in our own lives. Yeah, so go past just regular relief and that relief that like is, it happens when you believe, right? We can relieve ourselves and calm ourselves down and most of you guys stop there. But Neville's talking about the type of relief that is, can only come from absolute belief. Right. Or the only, only other way was like literally seeing it done. Mm -hmm. And you believe it's done because you witnessed it. But he's saying you can get to that place without actually having to witness it. And if you do, then it's as good as done. And he's witnessing it in his imagination <clears throat> to such an mm -hmm. extent that he feels the emotion. Yeah. Yeah. But he feels. The so those emotions are good. Your emotions are going to tell you if you're thinking about things the right way or the wrong way. Your feelings, same thing. But they don't really mean shit. What really matters is believing that's the relief you're looking for not this temporary relief that calms you down the relief is like oh thank god it's done thank god it's back i've got it literally in my hands like i told you guys the story of losing my wedding ring i started to just calm myself down i was like no no i'm going to bed with that thing tonight and i went down and i was trying to get it out of the washer i knew it was down in the thing and i just hit it and it went ping i even said to god god I believe. I'm a real big believer. I don't deserve this. You can fix this. I know you can fix it. You know you can fix it. So give me my ring back, please. And I hit the washing machine and went ping. And I was like, are you shitting me? And I was like, wow, you never stop amazing me. <laughs> it was like, I felt like I was like, no, nah, nah, I was just fucking with you. Here you go. Here's your ring back. You thought I wasn't going to give it to you, right? But I did. Gotcha. You're definitely going to bed with that ring on, man. I told you. I don't know why you get worried about this stupid shit. <laughs> but I had to let you see that you get worried about stupid shit. But once you calm down and trust me, like, you got it. Okay? We good? Okay. Remember this, though. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. Say, say that again. Yeah. Like, remember that I did this, you know? Yeah, but also like, that, 
you get caught up in stupid stuff. Oh, yeah. You get caught when up you... in all this stupid shit and worry instead of just believing and trusting me. Because you just said, hey, man, like, you made a good argument. And I was like, you know what? There you go. Here's your ring. I was that really is one of the key things. Because that's what I had Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. Because that's what Jesus says in the Bible, too, is, you know, we're to be anxious for nothing. We're not to worry. You know, and, and, and that's why. Because we get caught up in all that stuff instead of going to God and... <clears throat> believing in in God being able to sort things out and you know as as Neville Goddard said earlier which we quoted that in spite of your wickedness I can turn to the Lord and he will retrieve that which is seemingly lost so that's that's the contrast there love that love that got to make sure we put that down below for them to to read over and over again guys again I apologize I'm on an insane amount of coffee I got a really good night's sleep last night I'm really excited about what we're talking about so I'm a little hype right now, so I'm like a little <laughs> hyped up. So this stuff is just so good. And then when I start remembering these stories of me and God together, it's like two old friends sitting down and being like, oh, man, you're fucking awesome. It's like, oh, you're fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, we tell each other about how much we love each other. Yeah, but you did this for me and you did this for me, except God's the one doing everything. So <laughs> I, I like to share this stuff with you guys and let you I want you guys to start looking at God like not only a very loving parent, but like your best friend who you know is always going to come through for you. Absolutely. And remind yourself, it is so stupid to doubt this person because they always show up for me. Yeah. They're right there. As soon as I let it go, being like, can I get in there now? Okay. Hold my beer and shut up. Finally, let me get in there. And then it's done like that. And, And that's why I recommend for you guys, especially when you're starting out to write down your memorial stones. So, Every time something really cool happens, find a special place to write it down, how like God came through for you. And then those times when you're feeling attacked and you're forgetting what God has done for you and what your relationship you have with him, then you can look at those memorial stones. And and I'll be honest with you guys, too. What a lot of times what God has done for you the most is, is that he is the prize and that he's just told you that he's loved you. And, and for a lot of that, that's, that's actually in many ways also, but he is, he is actually the the goal he is he is he is it um but yeah i just want to encourage you guys to to write that stuff down so that way if you're feeling discouraged or attacked you can go back and and look that stuff up that is you'll be encouraged yeah i think a lot of us get caught up in i need the ring i need the money i need the person Mm -hmm. i need the job the prize is god's love it's always there but the prize is you realizing it's always there and you feel it because when you do you feel invincible exactly i think that's the thing which a lot of People forget, and that's where a lot of church hurt and misinterpretation of the Bible comes from. Is mm-hmm. people think about it, and they're like, they they feel like somehow, oh, God didn't love me, or Jesus had to do this or that so that He could love me. It's like, no, 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 no. He did that because He loved you. He went onto the cross because He loved you. It wasn't like because of your sin or anything like that, or because you did something wrong. It's because He loves you, and people forget that. He, you are in good, good standing with him. Like he is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. You are always have been in a good relationship with him. Um, it's just that you, people refuse to accept that fact. And that's, that's the problem. So um, if you accept that you're in good relationship with God and you repent, then, then you will be. Um, and, and yeah, so it's, it's always there for the, for the taking, um, but people mm-hmm. forget that. And it's, Yep. And so the next part is Neville reminding you that you know it from experience. But that's why what Anders is saying is also important and why I talk to you guys about writing the three things down to have people say or do and the three things that you want to see. Because then you have a whole book after book, a, a library of milestones, of memorial stones that you can go back and look at. So when you get stupid and say, well, not this one. Gotta be like, never hey, work man, out for me. That, yeah, open that closet up, bro. And you got book upon book of blessings. And then throw in, I keep showing up to remind you that I love you all the damn time. When are we going to stop with the pity party? Yeah. So you, you know it from experience. You expect a loved one and they're late. And then it's an hour. Then it's two hours. And you know the relief that comes when you hear a familiar voice. Start remembering in the past, too that you were worried, you were worried, and then you calmed down, and then God came through for you, and you got relief, 
And God wants you to always have that relief for every problem. The only reason you're having the problem is so that you can understand that God can always be the relief for the problem. So there's nothing to worry about. Once you guys understand this, you tend to not have as many problems either because lesson learned. Maybe every once in a while to just keep reminding you because we are human. Our brain is a horrible narrator and forgets a lot of stuff. But the reason shit happens is because one, you'll understand when it's good and when it's bad and you'll be grateful for when it's good. But thankful for when it's bad, if you let God come help you too, you'll see there's nothing to worry about anymore. It's the difference between heaven on earth and hell on earth. Yeah. Heaven on earth is God in your life. Hell on earth is the absence of God. <laughs> hell on earth and there's always something to worry about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Worrying is like saying a prayer for the bad thing to happen. That's not me. I heard Robert Downey Jr. say that. He realized that when he went through all that shit with the drugs and the alcohol. He'll tell you, what you guys don't understand is you see me now. But when I auditioned for Iron Man, I wore my thrift store suit that I got from the Goodwill and drove up in my shitty Hyundai. Not Honda, Hyundai. <laughs> and it was beat up. And I had to believe I wasn't Tony Stark, billionaire, philanthropist, playboy. I was Robert Downey Jr. And that I was just this character. And he said, he told himself nonstop, I'm the only person that can that they'll see can play that part. And he said, at first, I haven't been able to do it since. I wish I could realize what I did. Then later I saw another interview where he realized and he said, I realize worrying is like saying a prayer for the bad thing to happen. I choose not to worry anymore and I choose to believe. And I gotta say, the results speak for themselves. Right? People that thought I was crazy when I got into Neville were like, well, I cannot argue with the results. Maybe I should read these books. Maybe we can talk about this now. Mm -hmm. You know, just like Anders with me for years, he would try to tell me about God and I'd be like, ah, organized religion and blah, 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 blah. I remember I even thought with how logical you are, I was so surprised you even believed in God, you know? But, I mean, the smart ones do, guys. Oh, this God has the all... logic. Yeah. yeah. And the good thing is, whether you but, believe or not, you're going to find out. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I, but I think the big thing, though, too, is, yeah, it's it's a deeper level when it goes beyond logic to experience. And, <clears throat> and then, as we were saying earlier, I mean, the big thing for a lot of people is, you know, it, have you experienced God's love on any level? Um, that's what really makes the difference. And if you haven't, you know, ask ask to experience it. But if you haven't, it's you know, it's understandable why you would be so skeptical. Um, and and you'll yeah. have a your you know your whole thinking transformed when you you experience it and you realize that He's real and He loves you and He's He's with you always um, because He's Christ within the hope of glory. I think God also has an incredible sense of humor and yes, when we're acting like this, not, instead he's not of being like all fire and brimstone, it's more like he shows you how ridiculous it is. And like, I think he really loves showing us how what we think is logical is actually extremely logical. And that the thing you would think is illogical is the most logical thing, right? This miraculous being that just solves all your problems and loves you unconditionally, always comes through for you, never fails you, but you gotta believe when you do, you'll realize, wow, all this other stuff only makes sense because I say it makes sense. But if I stop mm -hmm. saying it makes sense and I say this makes sense, then that's the world I now live in. Mm -hmm. And God's like, sure. isn't it so much nicer over here? It's like you have a live-in concierge. You know? And yeah, it is fascinating. How the reality, happy. yeah, the reality we live in is really affected by how we imagine our reality to be. And it's it's um in many ways indistinguishable for, for most people. And that's why God is referred to as imagination by Neville, because all of that stuff goes on in our imagination. It's where the third party is born. Mm -hmm. It's where the 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 lack of funds comes from. It's where the, I can't get a job. Guys, again, Anders has told you. When all this stuff happened, I was like, I am so screwed. I dropped out of college. I don't know. I'll never get a job. And he's like, what? What? God showed me I was wrong. 
God was like, fuck a degree. <laughs> right? Who cares? Watch what I can do. I still hear that voice when I do try to even doubt. He just goes, dude, come on, really? Watch what I can do. <laughs> Watch what I'm about to do here, man. Let's go that way. Okay. And I stopped fighting him. That's what you guys got to do too. You know? So he talks about feeling the relief of possession. The contents. Yes, I didn't want to go out and replace them. We loved everything in it. My wife's dresses. My, the guy didn't, whoever transcribed this didn't know. To replace them. <clears throat> things of that sort. But why replace them if you like what you have? So see, Neville stops saying, oh, we're going to have to play. Oh, it's all, oh, woe is me. Uh, he's like, well, fuck that. I like it. God's going to come through for me. I don't have to replace it. I just go to God and God will bring it back to me. And this is crazy what happens. Uh, but why replace them if you like what you have? And it would have taken at least $1,300 to replace the contents. Long before we could settle, we would have to put out that sort of money. Again, back then, even more money. But I went to the one being that I trust implicitly. The world will call it by any other name. I call it my imagination, and I firmly believe that my imagination is God. I believe he is the one character in scripture spoken of as the Lord Jesus Christ. To me, there is no other. So I firmly believed in the reality of what I was doing. So while it seemed illogical to others to be like, Dude, you can't just say you're not going to replace the shit. The shit is gone. The <laughs> airline, the, the people told you it's gone. It's not coming back to itemize it and they'll help you, you know, refund it, whatever. But you're probably not going to wear that dress anymore because as much as you liked it, it was two seasons ago. You're probably not going to get that watch anymore because they only made a limited edition. Neville goes, bullshit. I'm getting it all back. Because I'm going to my man, Jesus. I'm going to my, my guy, God, my loving father. And he tells you implicitly. The fifth day went by and no calls from the airport. On the sixth day, when the mail was delivered, there came a letter. As I opened it, first of all, it was written in ink, but printed so that no one could guess the script. When I opened the letter, it simply said, your suitcase is in the locker. Sonny the Bandit. So Sonny the Bandit signed the letter. Your suitcase is in the locker, signed Sonny the Bandit. And then he enclosed a key, number 164. My wife called the Crazy. airport and read the letter to the security officer. He said they'd get in touch right away after they investigated. Within a matter of moments, he called back to say they had no box, no number 164, but they would get in touch with San Francisco because it was mailed in San Francisco. They called San Francisco, and within an hour, they called me back that the police had found it in number 164. Opened the suitcase, and it was ransacked. Everything was just simply ransacked, but they were sealing it and flying it off to L.A. Would I come over with my wife a little after six and in the presence of the police department of L.A., not their security forces, examine the contents? So we went over. It was simply a shambles. Everything was turned inside out. Even a simple little thing like your handkerchiefs were turned inside out. We bought two little presents for our daughter and a friend of hers. We went to Gump's and we asked them to please wrap them as gifts beautifully wrapped. They were torn apart but the presents were there. Everything was intact. Not one thing was missing. Our checkbook, every check was there, but it was just simply a mess. They apologized for the condition of the bag and then said, what may we do? I said, nothing. When we go on a trip that exceeds a few weeks, we invariably have everything cleaned. We come back, it's been our custom and we'll do it as we've always done for we would have done it anyway. So he's telling him, no, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to have a clean. Don't worry. We'll, we, we would do this anyway. Neville's just grateful. Then he said, Mr. Goddard, I'm awfully sorry, but when you and Mrs. Goddard travel the next time on our line, you are our guest round trip. So Neville gets it. Instead of being a, a big dick and being like, clean all my shit, fix it, uh, wrap it all up. He's like, no, no, no. Thank you for just doing it. I really appreciate it. Oh, we were going to get it cleaned anyway. Don't even worry about it. Thank you for doing your job. They're like, hey, man, thanks for not being an asshole, too. And he got more than just his stuff back then. He's got a free trip. Right? What has Neville always told you? You'll get what you want, and if you really believe, it'll be better than you could have ever imagined. This kind of stuff happens to Neville all the time. And so we brought it back. Yes, it was a mess, 
You may say, why did you take your bag when you teach this? I cannot stop you. And he said, so he's saying, people would say to him, you might say to me, hey, why'd you let your bag get stolen? Why'd you let that happen to you, Bry guy? Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that, Anders? You know, why'd you let him take your bag in the first place? And he says, I cannot stop you from thinking what you want to think. If I'm a victim of your wickedness, well, I have to be the victim of your wickedness. But I must not forget my principle. This is what Anders was talking about. That in spite of your wickedness, I can turn to the Lord and he will retrieve that which seemingly is lost. So go ahead. Fuck around and find out. That's what he's telling you here. Go ahead. Be wicked. Wish bad things on people. But you better hope they don't know God. You know, he says, I went to Caesar and Caesar did all that Caesar could do and they could not find it. The police department couldn't find it here. The police department in San Francisco couldn't find it. The people on the cruise liner, no one could find it and they considered it as good as lost. I, however, did not accept that and I simply assumed that I had it. That's all he did. To the best of my ability, I simply felt the reality of that which my senses denied and my reason denied. So he's saying, literally, my senses are like, you're fucking crazy, Neville. You have nothing in your hand. There's nothing heavy in your hand. He's like, bullshit. I remember how heavy that bit bag is. Hey, ne <laughs> Neville, look around. You can't see any of your shit. I don't give a shit. I kind of remember what was in that bag. Then my wife made a list. So now I can even visualize that. And he believed it and he got it. All of it. What thief? steals your bag, unwraps your presents to see what valuables are in there, has a hold of your checkbook, and doesn't take a damn thing. That's wild. So this man <laughs> really tried wild. to do his wickedness to Neville, but Neville knew God, and Neville was like, aha, fuck around and find out. I think this is good, too, because that we're bringing this up. I mean, we're, we're seeing, you know, how Neville does things how he really feels it real all those things but we're also seeing here mm -hmm. that a lot of people i think get the wrong impression that anyway i mentioned this before um i get the wrong impression that nothing bad ever happened to neville goddard you know and because it's all it just seems like one you know awesome victory after another and he's just tracing yeah. through life but actually you know he did go through a lot of circumstances it's just that unlike some people <laughs> like myself uh, Neville Goddard doesn't like spend me. a lot of time whinging about it yeah. and complaining and and being anxious and worrying and doing all those things. Instead, um, you know, when he tells a story, you know, he doesn't really linger on the circumstances. He he, you know, he he goes into the you know, outcome and 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 how how things went. So I but I but I like this because he's really kind of explaining to you, like, yeah, I'm not I'm not saying that. Nothing bad is ever going to happen to you again. Like you will go through things, and and I'm sure they probably felt violated, you know, having their stuff stolen, and um, that's it's it's certainly just disconcerting, and you know, there's is mm -hmm. yeah, definitely wasn't fun experience, you know. And and this isn't the only time he says this. He actually talks about that in the Bible. Jesus tells you this. Jesus says, "I'm not telling you things are not going to happen. Bad things are not going to happen, but I am telling you that when they do." That's when you go to God and watch how those bad things are solved and solved quickly, mm -hmm. how they work out in your favor. I really, the older I get, the more I learn about this stuff, think that nothing bad really happens to you. It just appears that way at first. But That's the true, smart true. people go, it can't be bad because I have God. And they go, aha, you get what I'm trying to do here. Just like when you won't learn the lesson. At first, I thought God makes it so hard you can't go down that path anymore. And he does. But he's also doing it to show you, like, see, you thought it was bad, then you fucked up some more, then you thought it was really bad, then you really fucked up, and you're like, it's impossible. And then you finally surrender and be like, well, fuck it, I, I'll give it to you, God, because I give up, and you let me hold, you hold my beer, and I bring it back, and I'm like, ta-da, and you're like, how the fuck did you do that? And he's like, it was easy. I'm God, bro. You know? I think that's like, part like, of what makes for, like, the glory of God and the glory of God in your life, right, is that nothing ever really happened. Um, in some ways, that's great. But, I mean, it, but we can also really see the awesomeness of God that <laughs> he gets us through trials, he gets us through circumstances. And in some cases, we get to be, I think, the hand of God. We get to be the blessing in other people's lives for people who maybe um, don't understand or people for whatever reason are having something happen to them. So mm -hmm. something which could seem like a problem to us could be actually be an opportunity for us to bless other people, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And again, guys, when you're not learning the lesson and it gets worse, it's not God punishing you. It's God showing you, hey, man, you're not getting it. So let me turn up the dial and, you know, turn the heat up in the kitchen. But just call out to me and I'll blow some nice air conditioning through there and sit you down at a table and cool you off and give you, you know, like the drink that'll quench your thirst for good. You know, what does Jesus tell the lady at the well, the woman who's like, you don't know, you know, you won't want my water, this like that. And, you know, and he talks to her about his water. And like, if she drank from his cup, yep. she'd never be thirsty again. You knew who I Amen. really was. And again, that's another person who's like thinking, I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. Don't you understand? I'm like the whore of the town. The reason I'm here in the middle of the hottest part of the day is because I'm shunned. And the wives don't want me here because they gossip and want to stone me and shit. And Jesus goes, well, guess what? They're all wrong. You're talking about the Messiah and you wish you would just hurry up and show up. Well, guess who the Messiah is? It's me. And guess who he's telling first? I'm not here for the holy men. I'm not here yep. to go. She, she, she wasn't even a Jew. Jew. And, and yeah, she wasn't Jesus was a Jew. Was a Jew. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, out of all the people, you would think you'd be the last person that the Messiah would come to. But I'm here to tell you. They've got it all wrong. I'm not here to build the holy men up and make them seem more important. He doesn't give a shit about the holy men. Jesus kept saying, I'm here for the sinners. It couldn't be more clear. And even Jesus himself got mad in the temple when he saw what they did to his father's home. I think it's actually wonderful because I think through that, God... It's like being a parent. I remember all these people when we were going through all this shit were telling us this and that about our kid and we don't understand. And I'm like, you got that from a fucking book, but you're not a parent. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> it's not something you can read about. You have to experience it. And it's different with each kid. You have no idea what's inside of me. And that kid has half of that. You have no idea what's inside her mom. And she has half of that too. But I know why she's acting up right now. Cause I felt unheard and I see that she's feeling unheard. So I know how to solve this problem. You're going to tell me it's a big deal. Take her somewhere else and make a huge deal out of this. When really all I got to do is, Hey, I'm really sorry. I, I think I haven't been listening and I really love you. Go ahead. Tell me. And then let me explain why I'm doing. Cause I just telling no to you. It's not going to help. It probably frustrates you. And I'm really sorry about that. I remember with my daughter, she would get frustrated and I'd be like, all right, what are, you, what are you frustrated at here? That your dad loves you so much and wants to hug you and kiss you all the time and doesn't want you to get hurt? You want to know why I actually said no? And she goes, why? And I go, because daddy did this when he was little and I broke my arm. And she goes, wait, you broke your arm? Yeah, I just didn't want you to break your arm. Well, dad, why didn't you tell me that? Now I'm not <laughs> mad at you. Now I get you really love me. I don't want to break my arm. You don't want me to break my arm. Thank you, dad. I didn't want to break my arm. That would suck. Rose broke her arm. I don't want that to happen, dad. Okay, great. So from now on, Dad, if you just tell me why, you say, no, I'm okay. So I would. I realized, oh, my God, there's the solution. People could not believe. Friends, family, everybody's like, man, this kid is so well-behaved. She's like your little buddy. You, you kind of talk to her like she's not a kid, but it's also like very age-appropriate. It was this weird thing. I talked to her and let her know that I thought she was growing up. She could handle responsibility, but also this might be a little above your pay grade too. So daddy's going to step in and help too. Like it was just, we found this wonderful way to communicate. She wanted mm -hmm. to talk to me all the time. The other big thing I noticed was she was going through a lot of stuff with her mother and I, and I was like, she needs my attention. Okay. You want to talk? Yes. Hold on one second, sweetie. I'm going to turn off my phone completely. So I, started thinking about when I was a kid, what made me feel good. And I started doing that for her. And I didn't have any of the problems that she was having other places. But it mm -hmm. wasn't that those other people weren't good people to take care of her. They just didn't know. You couldn't read that in a book. You had to have experienced it yourself. And then instead of going and telling him and make it sound like I'm saying, you're a bad parent, you're a bad teacher, you're a bad grandparent, whatever. I was like, God, let them just see what I'm doing and then come to me and ask me what I'm doing. You know, that's mm -hmm. what you guys have to do. Almost immediately, you'll, you'll see results. Again, if you believe, you have to just keep telling yourself when those bad thoughts come in, sorry, get the fuck out of here. Ping, 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 bye. And then get hustling with your affirmations. God always comes through for me. God never fails me. 
And don't just say that shit till you're like, okay, I'm finally not stressing. Say that shit till you're like, it's like somebody trying to tell me the sky isn't blue. There's no way in hell I'm ever going to believe God doesn't come through for me. Like Neville says, he believes implicitly. He believes no matter what. He'll go to Caesar and try it that way. But if he doesn't, it's almost like he gets relieved because now he gets to go to God. Caesar can fuck things up. God never messes up. God always comes through with me. Caesar, probably going to fail me 50-50 if I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. God, 100% never fails. But again, guys, the, the rub is you've got to believe. It's actually a really genius way for God to prove to you that he's real rather than coming down and being like, hey, everybody, I'm here. And then the people who didn't see him were like, well, I didn't see him, so you could be full of shit. <laughs> God's like, I got a foolproof way to show all of you I exist, but the rub is you got to want it too. Well, they did come down journey, and they nailed him to a cross. <laughs> I know, yeah. That every deity in the history of any religion, they kill him, right? The guy comes down, preaches love, peace, everything, and they're like, ah, kill him. Why? Because we really don't want love and peace. A lot of us really don't. We want somebody to be angry at because we don't want to be angry with ourselves. We gotta have somebody to blame, somebody that proves we're the victim, we're the martyr. Guys, it's all your fault. It was all my fault. It was all Anders' fault. But we had the solution. Get smart, use the solution. You can be as needy as you want with God. Stop being needy with your boyfriend. Stop being needy with your girlfriend, your family, codependent. Go get codependent with God. He doesn't care. But he has a wonderful way of also helping you believe in yourself, not need to be codependent, but also showing you at the same time somehow that he loves you and it's okay to be needy too. It's I can't explain it, but he always has the best solution to help you grow and evolve as a spiritual being. Fuck as a human being, as a spiritual being. I think he lets us choose what type of person we're going to be when we come down here to. You got you get to be the guy who's fucking clueless and is the victim his whole life, and you get to experience that. You get to be the guy that kind of gets it and goes looking for it, and things get better or worse, depending on which way you go. Or you show up, you ever meet those people who you're like, God damn, that guy just knows. He just is, he just figured it all out. And those people, I think, are just here to kind of help us out. For me, Anders was one of those people. You see them and you're like, man, why can't I just be like that? Why do I got all this goddamn drama in my life all the time? Because I don't believe and this guy believes. Me trying to tell this guy God isn't real would, would be like somebody trying to tell me the sky is not blue on a sunny blue day with not a cloud in the sky. I would be like... Dude, look up in the air. It's blue. I would be like, you're taking crazy pills. <laughs> that would be the conversation you would have if you tried to tell Anders and now me that God does not work. I got people getting mad at me in the sub saying I'm gatekeeping. I won't let the sub have all this shit. I keep trying to tell this person. I've given you the answer. But whenever they get mad at me, they always talk about, I've listened to the lectures, i read the books, I heard his stupid podcast, it doesn't help, he's a narcissist. I get it, I like to talk a lot, big fucking deal. I love that, I love that. Anders likes it too, he's not suffering. He gets to talk, he loves doing this, right? We have a really good time doing this, that's why we do it. If we didn't like it, we wouldn't do it. Absolutely. We love you guys, but we. this is like our time with each other too, you know? We're trying to be better men and we're there for each other. And these conversations help us and remind us and ease our worries. They help us out just as much as they help you guys out, you know? And we took a little break because we don't like to talk about stuff just to talk about stuff. So many YouTube channels need content. We really don't care about subscribers. Like, we love that you guys support us. We could give a shit though. What we care about is God gives us a message. It touches our heart. We speak on it, and that makes me feel like I'm one with God, I'm one with Anders, I'm one with you guys, and it's just who I want to be. But I'm not perfect. I'm not like God. 
I get frustrated. I get upset. I'm like, you guys keep asking the same damn thing. Nobody reads my <laughs> posts. I told you how to ask that question. I get it. I know I'm a dick sometimes. I'm working on it. I go to God. God, give me patience. God, make me not be a dick. And then you guys push it more. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's that sense of humor again. I ask for patience and instead of God just making me go, who, I'm calm. Serenity now. God's like, nope, I'm going to pile on this shit so that I can give you a chance to show yourself you can be kind, loving, and patient. And I'm like, ah, yes, son of a gun. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to calm down here. I'll be patient. Why do you think some of you guys, I'm like, read the damn books. It's not because I don't want to answer you because it's like, that's what you need to do anyway. But some of you guys, I'll be like, all right, this person's really hurting. Let me help them out. But it's whatever you're pushing out. I can tell you, if you talk to my clients, they will tell you, this guy can read you when you can't even read your, it's crazy. But they think it's me. I'm like, it's not me. It's what you push out. Like, I just feel connected to God and God is letting me know. It's crazy. I can't even explain it. Andrews is just like that. He's very good at knowing how to get to the core of your problem, what you're really doing wrong, and what you're not being honest with yourself about, and what you're pushing out. You don't want to see it, but he'd be like, well, here's the proof. And it pisses you off. But I'll be damned if he's not on the money. All the answers are out there. You know? Some people need help, and they get it. And I love helping you guys out. I love coaching people. But some people can't afford it either. But I still want you guys to get help. Andrew still wants to help too. So we do podcasts. We make posts. But some of you guys get too needy with us. So I'm telling you, there is someone out there that will let you be as needy as you want with them. And that's God and Jesus Christ. You can be as needy as you want. God never gets sick of it. God's like yeah. a parent who just knows what to say. Yeah, I liked what you were talking about too with this story with your daughter. And, mm -hmm. you know, she has a relationship where she can just really talk to you and, and God wants to have that relationship with us too. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can just talk to him. You can tell him things, tell him what's on your heart, ask him what's on his heart, um, you know, ask him for for wisdom, you know, as we stated before, ask him to to hear from him, to, you know, hear, um, feel his love, you know, all, all these things you can ask him for and believe that you'll receive them and they'll come. But, you know, definitely want to encourage you guys to definitely go to God and, and, and talk to him about what's on your heart. You know, he knows what's on your heart, but but he likes hearing from you. And and I think that's the other thing, too, is he's not going to be um, mad at you. Um, he's not going to be like Brian. He's going to want. He's going to want more for you, but he's not going to be mad yeah. at you. So you can go talk so to everybody him. that's that's mad at me out there and thinks I'm gatekeeping or I don't. Tell me fuck off and go to God. Watch how yeah. He is way nicer to you than I am because I'm still human and I'm fighting that and reminding myself that I'm God all the time and I'm one with God and that's who I want to be and be like Christ. But it's tough, guys. It's tough. God can be everywhere helping everybody. So. But you know what? Actually, it's not tough. It's only tough when I say it's tough. When I say it's not tough and God loves me, it's not tough. <laughs> That's the truth. It's just the story. You guys got to watch those damn stories. You'll sit there and tell me, I believe and I know this, and, but, and the but is the real story. But I can't see how this circumstance can be overcome. All you did was tell his mom to fuck off. All you did was say, you know, you're like your mother and yeah, it pissed her off. But come on, man. You guys claim this love is so special, so wonderful. You feel in your heart they're the only ones for you, yet you have such little faith in the love and them as well. Surprise, surprise, you're doing it to God. Why wouldn't you do it to them? You take God for granted first, and that's why you take your person for granted. That's why you take your money for granted. That's why you take your blessings for granted. The only difference is God doesn't say, fuck you, I'm out of here. God goes, sorry, I'm not going anywhere. Keep being a shit. I can do this all day. I'm here when you're ready, though. By the way, I'm also loving you right now. Right now, you're thinking like the footsteps, bro. You're thinking you're walking through the storm by yourself and the sand by yourself. And then you go, look, I only see one set of footprints. And God's like, because I carried you. 
<laughs> you think you walk, dude? Come on. You couldn't even get out of bed that day. I threw your ass over my shoulder and I kept you moving forward. But I love you. He didn't even say it harshly like that. He's like, oh, yeah, that's where you just didn't want to walk and I just decided to carry you. God's like your friend at the club that takes care of you when you get sloppy drunk. <laughs> And doesn't care the next morning when you want to thank. He's like, no, come on, man. You're my friend. God knows we're all a hot mess. He kind of, I think, likes it. He tells you, I'm here for the sinners. I'm here for the one lost sheep. Yeah, that if you want to see, see. You're special. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Anders. Yeah, if you want to see the contrast, you know, it's like we're, we're joking. But if you want to see how God actually behaves, it's like read the parts of the Bible, which talks about how Jesus acts after the resurrection, you know. He comes back, right, a few days later, and are all his apostles, like, having a prayer meeting, praising God? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does he come and, you know, say, you, you know, <laughs> you know chicken-hearted people, you cowards, mm -hmm. like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Does he say anything like that? No, of nope. course he doesn't. No, he reconciles with, with, with Peter, especially. And there's a very dramatic part where he, he does that and, and lets Peter know that they're all good, even though, obviously, Peter feels some kind of way about everything. So that's that's the amazing thing. I mean, you can see it. You can see it right there. Um, that's his. What was his also goodness. interesting is how God just knows how to like fix a lot of other things that were going on politically, socially. The first people Jesus always appears to is like women. Back in a time when women's testimony wouldn't be considered fact, they're they're whatever. And yeah. out of all of the people that spent time with Jesus and traveled with them, the apostles were freaking out. And we're like, where is the, the sulfur raining down on the wicked and the Garden of Eden showing up and me being able to pet lions and tigers and bears? And Mary is like, hey, bro, he told you the kingdom of heaven is within. What mm -hmm. are you afraid of? You could have heaven right now. You're choosing not to. He told you it's within. My favorite line in Bruce Almighty is when God says to Bruce, everyone's always looking up. Maybe you guys should start looking in. Because that's where I am. That's true. Yeah, well, that's like that passage of, of Peter we read too, where it's like, yeah, people are like waiting for like the end to come. And it's like, well, don't, <laughs> you shouldn't be so eager because, you know, God's, God's giving time for everybody, including you to, <laughs> to repent yeah. and to, to get, get, get right with me. <clears throat> so I want to read this next part because it gets into what we're talking about now. All right. And then and why don't we wrap it up? You, yeah. Yeah. I think we'll wrap it up here. This is going to be a two parter guys. So Neville says, I'm asking you to accept the true being that is Jesus, man's true identity. He's telling you, you are Jesus. You are Christ. Man is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is a man's own wonderful human imagination. There is no other Jesus Christ. Man's true identity is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is a man's own wonderful human imagination. He says it again. There is no other Jesus Christ. God became man that man may become God. It's like we talked about earlier. God comes down and is man, and his gift to you for us, getting him getting to experience that, is by giving you the gift of getting to be God and create. God is very fair, very just, very, very actually, if anything, gives you way more. Because let's be honest, getting to be God or getting to be man, I choose being God every time. Fuck being man. Right? Yeah, so God gives the short end of the stick there. Yeah. yeah. Poor Jesus comes down and is like so scared. He's like begging God, if there's any other way, God, they are literally about to arrest me, please. Mm -hmm. And then guess who shows up? Satan. Hey, man, look, I'll clear the path. Command the angels to lift you up to the Lord. Go confront your father. And he goes, no, it's God's will. But what he's really yeah. saying is it's also his will. God's will and his will are one. That's why if Jesus will said, I, I see what the father is doing and I, I do what I see the father doing. It's literally like those of you have kids, your kids see what you're doing and they do what you do. Exactly. Exactly how he was. Because he loved Jesus his daddy so saying, much. Jesus is saying, I love my dad so much that I see what he does and I trust my father enough that no matter how painful this looks, whatever, I trust he'll get me through it. And Jesus really comes back to tell you, yes, the ultimate reward is the kingdom of heaven. You don't really die. You, you actually go to this place that is literally anything you think manifest immediately. It's just pure love. You can't even explain heaven, right? What does Neville say too about how close we are with God? It's so close that 
no logical uh, <laughs> definition of close could explain simply how close he is. You know, it's that crazy. So he says, I'm asking you to accept the true being is Jesus. God became man so that man may become God. You can do this for everything in this world. Do not accept anything because at the moment reason denies it. So many of you get so caught up in what you call facts, logic, reasons, circumstances, whatever. He's telling you, say, fuck off. Remember the story about me and the free coffee. Couldn't get free coffee to save my life. I go in and go, free coffee, piss off. I'll pay double. <laughs> the guy starts yelling at me. It looks like it's about to blow up and I'm going to get arrested and my kid's going to see. And it turns out, here, Brian, free coffee for you and your friend. And does your kid drink coffee? No, we'll give her free milk. They were willing to just give me a good day. They would have probably given my daughter a frappuccino if she wanted it, <laughs> right? I had her bouncing off the walls. But God was like, and I grabbed it from my friend. I was like, hey, man, you don't believe. You told me if I don't do this, I can't do this. Like, the secret. And I was like, you're not a believer. I gave it back to her, <clears> of course. But, but, you know, and then that lady shows up saying, read this book. And I'm like, I just, I know that book. I know that guy. That's what I think I was doing. I thought I was doing it. But it didn't work until today. <laughs> She's like, well, he does tell you to persist. You know? So we'll finish up with this part. Now, this concept of imagination raises a question. I have been asked, would you say then that imagination is sufficient for all things? If he is God and with God, all things are possible. Is imagination sufficient for all things? Or must I add a little reason just like the chef adds a little spice to make it more palatable? I say the answer to that question is this. According to your faith, be it unto you. Matt 9.29. I cannot really add anything, but I can say, according to your faith, be it unto you. Do you believe it's adequate? Do you believe it's insufficient? This is what I tell my clients. Am I doing enough? I feel like I'm not doing enough. Then do more. I feel like I've done enough. Then stop doing it. Just <laughs> do it to feel, you know, to keep the practice of it every day. But you don't have to bring them into it anymore. The people who are getting their SPs back at the end don't give a shit if the SP comes back. They're like, I'm done. My life is great. I moved to Hawaii. I did this. Like, I'm buying all new for Like, it's just awesome, man. Like, my life can't get any better. And on top of that, I don't give a shit about all the stuff that used to drive me crazy and all the drama. That's how I know that person's like a day or two away from their person calling them. And sure <laughs> enough, the moment they could call them and no matter what they say, they'd be like, that's okay. I can just fix it. Thanks. You just told me what I need to work on, but God's going to fix it anyway. They'll never have to pick up the phone. That person will call them because you are ready. You are really in the Sabbath. A lot of you guys like to bullshit yourself. You do a little bit of work and you feel better and you're like, I'm in the Sabbath. You're not in the Sabbath. Trust me, when you're in the Sabbath, nothing can shake you. Anders, you've heard the difference between when Sorry. I was doing the work and then when I was finally in the Sabbath, you were like, oh, you believed. <laughs> you can tell the difference in someone's voice. You'll feel yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. You know? So then he says, with God, things all of imagination. Okay, so if you don't believe it's sufficient, it's not. If you believe it's adequate, it is. If to your imagination is insufficient, well then, to you, it is insufficient. I can only tell you from my own experience, you will never find another law and you will never find another God. Listen to the words, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. I, the Lord, do all things and none can deliver out of my hand. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Now choose this day whom you will serve. And Joshua said, we choose to serve the Lord. Amen. That's awesome. So let's let's kind of end it there. Anders, do you yeah. want to kind of talk about that quote real quick? Because I think you mentioned other the part about two, according to your faith, the quote from Matthew. Yeah, well, I think the, I, I think they're both important quotes, and I mean we can go into the context of them, but I think they're in a lot of ways pretty straightforward. I mean we've talked about this before that you know it's gonna what's going to show up is going to be according to your faith according to what you're believing on and you know, a lot of and you know in this case jesus is touching their eyes and, and they believe that they would miracles would happen for them and and deuteronomy 32 if i recall is actually a pretty crazy chapter um which i recommend reading i think this is the one where 
God basically um, well, reveals his Moses, eye, yeah. it's a song of Moses where he's basically mm -hmm. talking about his his people. And he's just reminding them, look, you know, God did all these great things for you. And, you know, you better remember that because if you but they don't they stop forgetting, forgetting it, <clears throat> yeah, they'll end up forgetting. And, you know, and they'll go off with other gods and who aren't even real gods. They're, you know, they're basically demons, uh, demon princes or whatever. <clears throat> and they're sort of little fake, fake gods. And they're not anything like God who's, uh, who's loving and, and almighty. And so, you know, it's a it's a big warning, and you know, he also is is Moses is clear that some some really bad things are are going to happen. So there's some some pretty crazy yeah. stuff at the end of uh end of, end of Deuteronomy, um, which is, is so this pretty is good. interesting to read. We're literally yeah. leaving them on a cliffhanger here, which yeah. is what any good storyteller does. So <laughs> when we get back into it next time, we're going to talk about how Israel responded, how they at first said we choose the Lord but then forgot the Lord. They couldn't yeah. keep the tents, as, as the Bible says. The, Israel couldn't keep the tents, meaning they couldn't keep the state. It seemed too much for them. Yeah, because then when you go back and read the Old Testament, I I mean, yeah. you can see that there's like all these circumstances where people just look at the, well, they look at the circumstances and, and they have to be convinced, um, okay, God, um, you know, God is with me, and, and they don't realize, too. And sometimes they do things, too, where they just think, oh, yeah, we'll be able to handle it on our own, and they don't ask if God is, is in it or if God is with them. And then they, so a lot of times when they're, you know, they focus on on the circumstances, on the concrete, what they can see in front of them, and, and they want those things, um, but they don't focus on, on their relationship with God, and it gets them in trouble. Yeah. And then there are also a lot of really... Um, really sad and, and tragic moments when, when people do things like that. But then there are also heroic moments. Like one thing which springs to mind is there's a crazy part where um, Jonathan, who is uh, Saul, King Saul's son and and King and the future King David's uh, best friend at the time, he feels called by the Lord. I guess the, the Philistines have come in and he feels called by the Lord to go out into the enemy's camp. And I think he has one other man with him and the other man's sort of role is to like guard his back. And so he kind of goes into the camp and basically starts fighting with all the people in the camp. And uh, and then all the people in the camp just start getting all freaked out and they like rout because, you know, this crazy person is coming to their camp and is, is fighting with them and they can't kill him. And then they just like panic and like run off. And, and it's just, you know, example of, uh, you know, the hand of hand of God like coming in and and making the, the impossible um, happen. So, um, yeah, so definitely, I definitely recommend you guys, you know, read some, read some Bible stories in the Old Testament and, and, you know, look out, look out for that. Look out for how, I mean, in, in a lot of cases, you can make a case that a lot of the Old Testament is um, God saying, like, don't do it. Don't, don't do that. And Israel, and Israel, like the people of Israel, like doing it anyway, and then they get in trouble and, and bad things happen. And God's like, well, I you know, told, told you guys not to do it. And, um, <laughs> He's like a parent, know. right? I told you I did that. Shit. It didn't work yeah. out. It's not going to work out for you. I let you know. <laughs> guys, this yeah, is why exactly. I bring Anders on because no matter what Bible part you talk about, he knows exactly the stuff, like everything. Like, again, please throw some love at him for this because I am constantly amazed at his knowledge of the Bible. Even when I think I'm starting to get it, he remembers stuff that I, you know, it's it's really great. We're very lucky to have him. You know, and again, the reason why Neville's telling you this, we'll get into this more later, is he tells you it's a sin to do that. The fundamental sin in this world is lack of faith in I am he. Unless you believe I am is he, you die in your sins. That's actually from John 8, 24. Sorry, it wasn't Neville. Yep. You know, you must firmly believe that the only Lord is I am. And a lot of you guys are not doing that. And a lot of you guys are not believing you're one with God. A lot of you guys think your parent hates you. Your father hates you. He's punishing you. You want to mm -hmm. talk about all the things you did wrong to your partner. We get it. But God is the one guy who goes, yeah, but you grew up. Yeah, but it doesn't matter anymore because you're not that person anymore because now you're a believer. Yeah, and when you do, you will be healed anyway. Yeah, you've repented and you won't do it again. 
That's why sorry doesn't mean shit. And a lot of you guys need to understand that. Actions are the real sorry. I had to learn that the hard way, but thank God I did. I said, I'm sorry all the time. And then I went and did it again. Yep. When you're really sorry, you repent and you believe in God. So, you know, I don't have to do that shit anymore. I don't have to manipulate. I don't have to lie. I don't have to try to convince somebody to love yeah. me. I don't have to beg. I don't have to do any of that shit. I don't have to react out of anger, fear. Yeah. I don't have to react out of anger, fear. And then you become a different person. And then it's very easy to believe that person deserves everything because you know, you're one with God and God would never disappoint you. That even when you thought he was, he was trying to give it to you too, but you were fucking it up. And he's like, okay, I'll just wait till you're ready and then I'll give it to you. And he just will push you until you're ready one way or another. And guys, again, we're not talking about religion here. We're talking about you and God. And again, those of you who want to say, oh, I love Neville, but the whole God thing is it turns me off. Then Neville's not for you. Neville is about God. In this lecture, he is telling you, this is all God. Imagination is God, not God is imagination. Imagination is God. It is all God. It is all Jesus. And you and Jesus are one and you are Christ and you're God and you're everything. And that's it, guys. You want to know how do I look past the circumstances? You believe that I've got the most powerful being ever behind me. And he just said, hold my beer and is going to get it for me. I cannot lose. Yeah, I, I think it's lose. because a lot of people, they'd have you know, their own imagination, their own beliefs yeah. about who God is and his his character. And actually I actually heard a good quote the other day about how the biggest rebellion against God is, is actually people's, you know, conceptions or misconceptions of who God is, you know, instead of believing God and believing that he is who he says he is, that um, he loves us, you know, and he's our, our father. Instead of believing him, you know, we have our own conceptions and you know, we, we ascribe those to him and you know, that's how we we read him. And, and, you know, I think you make a case of the people, you know, that's what Israel was doing, right? They were always, instead of really focusing on the true character of God, um, you know, like Jesus did, they they focused on these other things. And, you know, and that's probably why some people too get the impression that God's not so nice because, you know, that's what the Israelites focused on because they had their own, mm -hmm. you know, idea of God is. So don't, whatever your beliefs are about God, like try to say okay well what, what 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 don't ask let's not talk about my beliefs anymore let's 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 take a look at this what is what is neville saying you know if you, you like neville so much you know why don't you know take a look at what neville's saying about god what is he what is he really saying you know take away those preconceived notions and you know see what you know see what jesus has to say too see, see, see what he says it's in the bible about it really funny you're talking about this because one of the scripts that i'm working on because now we're on a strike too, and you know, but like one of the ideas I've just been playing around with is exactly this: finding a very humorous way of uh, if God were to come down and just be like, mm, "You got me all wrong, dude," you know, and like really just kind of like come down and finally be like, "All right, let's have a talk about this shit," because it's getting a little out of control here, you know, and. Uh, I don't know. I, I I think you're hitting the nail on the head. So many people really just have God all wrong. You know, we look at him like we would look at another human being and we think he's going to act like a human being and he's not. You know, he even came down and was man for a while. So he knows all the pitfalls of man. No one's going to do it better, you know. But I think a lot of you guys need to change your views about God. And yeah, stop worrying about other things and worry about what you're believing. Stop worrying about what everybody else is believing and worry about what you're believing in, what you're believing about God, what you're believing about you, this person you claim you had the most amazing love with. Where's your faith in that love? Where's your faith in that person? Where's your faith in God? That's where it all starts. When you start taking God for granted, you're going to start taking everything in life for granted. And then you're going to head down a path that'll seem really horrible to you, but really all it is is a path that leads to you living in God's glory and you getting to be one of the chosen ones that God says, hey, look, another shithead. I fixed them. All you other shitheads, come talk to me if you like this. Come take my shithead. How to not be a shithead class, you know? I don't know. I feel really blessed and I don't look at myself as a victim anymore. I feel like I'm being used to 
show everybody that God can fix anybody and anything. And I don't know, it's, it's really nice. You guys always ask me, why do I do it? And I you know I've kind of kept that a secret for a while, but I just, cause I don't want to seem conceited, but I think that the shitheads are the chosen people. I really do. I think God loves us because he gets to have fun with us and joke around with us. And then also show the world, Hey man, there's nothing to really worry about. You know, I don't know. That's just me, but Andrews, do you have anything you want to say to wrap up tonight? Hello? Oh, I think we might have lost them. Andrews, are you there? Oh, that's embarrassing. I thought I was uh, <laughs> unmuted. Yeah, but okay. I was just we saying that uh, this that was out. a great episode, <laughs> and I'm really excited to talk more about um, this lecture and I think it went really well even though it went a bit longer than we expected and I'm really yeah. excited for you Sorry guys to that. enjoy this so but see I give the guy a chance to talk and he puts himself on mute so <laughs> I gotta I gotta keep I gotta keep the dead air to a minimum so excuse me for always talking I come from a television background a live comedy background rule number one is no dead air so, <laughs> so that's all I'm trying to do, guys, because Anders is a very direct to the point guy. And he's like, and I'm done. And you got to go, okay, <laughs> so to expand, you know, I love that he does that. I do. But that's why I talk a lot. It's because I'm like, no dead air, you know. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for listening, tuning in. Please share your success stories. Show others how things can get better, how circumstances don't matter how with God all things are possible, how imagination creates reality, all that other good stuff. Again, show my man Anders some love, give him some thanks, you know, tell him thanks for being the, 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 the one that goes and puts all this extra effort in and thanks for putting all these links in here for us and Bible quotes and, I mean, my man works hard at it and I, I love him for it. So he knows I love him. I. You know, I show him I love him. And you guys need to do the same thing with him and with God and everybody in your life, you know. So, uh, you know, if you're not going to do it with God tonight, at least do it for Anders. So, <laughs> <laughs> but we love you guys. We, once again, as always, are intending that this message really speaks to you and is yes. the solution to your problem that gets you over the so-called hump you think you have, which you really don't. And tomorrow you wake up with that relief that Neville talks about because you and God have become one and God's told you hold my beer and you know he's on maybe we should change the podcast to hold my beer name it <laughs> hold my beer <laughs> but like that God said hold my beer and he's on his way to get you your person your money your job your whatever so we love you guys thanks again and uh please check out the uh the subreddit it's Neville Gossip it's the same as the podcast on Reddit, as always, I'm BryGuy7571. I'm with my good buddy Anders. We love you and good night. Love you guys. Goodbye.